Hello, my name is Annika Norden. I'm a customer success engineer here at Anthropology. Today we're going to be looking at a very simple parametric microfluidic chip design. And so today, as I just mentioned, keeping it pretty simple with a Y mixing microfluidic chip, um, but just thought this was a great example as we start to explore microfluidics and whatever kind of design comes within that realm. So just kicking off this with a very simple Y mixer that we have here. Um, as you see, I built up this file here and we have a few different inputs that we're working with. Um, so just a little bit of background, those not familiar with microfluidics, we're just working with uh, mixing different fluids depending on the kind of work we're doing here um, at a micro level. So here in this example, we have two input fluids that are then going through this chip to then um, mix at the bottom here. And with this visualization that I have here, I have two separate plates that would be put, uh, potentially printed separately. Um, Microfluidics are really big in the 3D printing world now, so a lot of different techniques, um, but potentially printed separately and put together um, or printed as a single piece, depending on the kind of printer you're working with. Um, but in this case, I just have it split in half and um, cut right open so that we're able to visualize this as we go through the process. But as you see here, we have a variety of different inputs, looking at the plate diameters here, looking at how we're shifting these points inwards and outwards, the radius of these different channels or these different openings that we have here, and as well as the diameter um, of our channels. We have start points, um, the number of intermediate points and end points, as well as the magnitude and period. We'll get into that a little bit later. But as far as how this is actually built up with the blocks, so I start with um, a simple box. Um, I'm just using a box from the corners here um, that I start with an initial point and an end point and creating a box from there. And then here you see I have a little bit of point work. So as we mentioned before, I have those input points. Here we just define two. I have my single intermediate point and my single output point. Um, and then here you see all of them together. Um, but from these points, we're creating a few different things. So these are features that we're going to be subtracting from this box here. So one, um, we need openings. So depending on how our plate is working. We might have some sort of pipetting system where we need those nice openings so we can pipette whatever fluids um, into those channels there. So we have these openings. We have a couple of spheres here. If I turn that on, you see just to round out those openings at the bottom. Um, we create our channels in here. Um, and this is very simply just a, a branch lattice um, that we're putting together here. Um, skipping over this for just a second, but then we're combining all those units. And because we're, we, we're introducing a nice blend radius within that combination, and that's allowing for them to smoothly connect there so we don't have any sharp edges because we want to make sure that all of that material is smoothly um, flowing to and from. And so as far as our output, you'll see that basically just took this body here and subtracted that away. So subtract by subtracting this away from this box, this original chip that we have here. Um, you can see if I do a nice section cut by hitting X that we can see how, how we're moving through that there. Um, but again, how we had that visualization before, basically just cut that in half and opened it up so we can see we've got these opening channels here that work through this as well. So super simple design here. Um, but the nice thing is because of how I built up this workflow, um, we can very quickly access these parameters to, to really hone in on our design. Um, maybe we want our channels to be a little bit thinner. I can bump this down to 0.15 millimeters instead. So you'll see that just takes a second to render because what's happening is as I'm updating these inputs, it's updating this entire workflow that I have here. So might not be able to see a difference right off the bat, but now we have a little bit thinner channels. Maybe we're working with um, different amounts of, of input fluid. So perhaps I could um, bump this up a little bit. Maybe we're starting with six and, and going down to two. Maybe we have two different mixers on, on one channel here. So we'll see, it'll take just a second to run.
once that runs there, you see we have it nicely updated. Maybe we've got a little bit of cramping. We don't like how those are interacting. So we could take that width, bump that up a little bit as well. So you can see here how quickly we can look at these parameters, look at these different um, design inputs and, and iterate through our design in that kind of way. Um, those who are within the world of microfluidics, you know those exact um, design techniques and parameters are important for building things like this. Um, maybe if we added the length and you're giving it more time for those fluids to mix together, I mean, it can really change things around from there. Um, but what I think is also fun to explore is a little bit of remapping. Um, I'm just gonna control Z back a few times so we can get to that original state that we had. Here we go. Taking just an extra second. Um, let's see, let's pull this back up again. And so this is a super simple design here, but with a little bit of remapping, we can add um, a little, a little wave to this channel here because that helps with mixing as we're mixing these two different materials here. So you'll see I have this magnitude and period. And if we add a little bit of magnitude, we're actually going to be working with um, some sign fields that are that are in the background working in that in that implicit world here um, to change up what's happening here. So now with this curvature, we're getting a little bit more space for these fluids to really come together and mix properly. Maybe we want to bump up the period a little more often. And for a little sneak preview of actually what's happening behind the scenes, we've got this remap field block. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing in um, this section of my channel here. Um, this is basically just a branch lattice that I thickened. Um, if I turn that visibility on, you see we've got that original channel here. And with this remap field, because this channel is itself an implicit body, we can take that implicit body, that, that field in the background and play around with it a little bit. So with this remap, we're keeping that X constant, we're keeping the Z constant, but as we're going along the Y direction here, we're bringing in um, a little bit of our math operations here to work with that sign field and give it, oops, don't want that visibility on, um, to give it, to play around with it a little and get some, some fun uh, geometries here that actually help within, within the mixing world. And so maybe this is something that I want to study. Maybe I want to um, take this single workflow to the next step and, and work with it a little bit more. And then I can actually do that um, because uh, with our custom block functionality. So actually, I may jump, jump back here. So we see I have this whole workflow in the background, but I also have these key parameters that I know I'm going to want to change around a little bit. And so what I can do is I can define what my output is going to be. And for visualization purposes, my output, I want this open channel. If I were to go off to the printer from here, then maybe my output would be um, this entire block that I'm printing, or maybe um, a slice stack of that, or some PNGs so that we can get that properly off to the printer and work from there. But in this case, just for visual purposes, I'm going to keep this as my output, and these are my defined inputs. So if I go to this study that I have here, I actually imported that file. And by importing that file, I'm allowing myself to access this microfluidic chip block. And you'll see by that double line that it's a custom block, something that I created. And so what I did was I populated three of these chip blocks, changed them up a little bit. Also, you'll notice I use a translate object just for a nice visualization. Um, but now we can see as I go through and change um, these different parameters, maybe I want this uh, to be a little bit thinner of a channel diameter. And bump it down to 0.15 again. Or maybe I want to therefore play with my period a little more, maybe bump that up to two. Then we can still have this nice clean custom block that is just showing me my important parameters and running that whole workflow in the background. So then I can have this whole family of chips that I can really look at and compare, maybe export a bunch at once, maybe do some simulation from there to really understand how these are working. But by using these nice custom blocks, and we can quickly hone in on, on these key design 
features to get exactly what we're looking for. So yeah, um, these, these files will be shared, so feel free to explore. Um, reach out if you have any questions. Any microfluidic um, experts out there, uh, feel free to reach out and we can I can learn from you. We can learn within the software to, to really make the most of, of these workflows within NTOC. But thank you.